There it is, the human design system. It's the science of differentiation that allows us to see how so very different we are. My name is Lavina Archers. I'm a 3-5 emotional projector. As you can feel in my voice, I can feel it in my body. Have you ever wished that you had a navigation system, a GPS for your own personal life? And if you had one, wouldn't you like to have it show you the way home to yourself? And that is what human design does for you, my friends. It gives you a navigation system for your own body, your own body compass. It allows you to make your decisions that you can trust. That's all human design is. Human design is a way of showing us how to make correct choices, choices that lead you to the correct struggles, choices that lead you to the right fulfillment, choices that lead you to the right people, places, things, partners. Everything that you wished you could have in your life, your mind, your conditioned thinking mind thinks that you want something. And when you get there, if you look at my design, my mind conditioned, not self, not me mind, my mind could fantasize about anything, any experience under the sun and imagine myself having that experience. And every time I tried to jump into that experience and make it happen, because I thought that that was what I wanted, I desired it deeply, all this imagination, all this fantasy, other people would project onto me, oh, you want to have this fantasy too? Okay, let's have it together. Let's share. Let's experience, let's feel. Because this is a deeply sexual stream, a lot of times over my life, there were all these experiences that I had that didn't lead me to where I wanted to go. I found out the hard way, third line error, whoops, had an experience. Oh, well, now it's an oh, well, like I shrug my shoulders and go, oops, <laughs> I made another quote unquote mistake again. What did I learn? So in this journey of learning things, there's a lot of things that I can teach you. I have a teacher line. I can share with you when I'm inspired. I share my feelings. I am going in a unique direction and I don't care whether you follow me or anybody else. I really care if you follow yourself. That's what I, what I want for you. So as an analyst, as a teacher now and teacher of analysts, as a Rave ABC and cartography teacher, a living your design guide, and a trainer. I'm also a BG5 business and career consultant and teacher. Is enough enough yet, Lavina? No, not yet. <laughs> There's still more. I've done lots of other trainings, just haven't done my homework. But on this journey, I've learned so much that if I could impart to you the one piece of success that I've gotten that I wish for all of you, that is the unconditional acceptance and love of self. If you can't imagine that, don't worry. Sometimes it just shows up all of a sudden, like, boom. I remember when I was maybe about three years into the experiment, I hated the sound of my voice. And for people who are deeply acoustic like I am, you know you have a sensitivity to sound? Anybody have a lot of fives in their design or individual circuitry activations in their design? When you're sensitive to sound and you don't like the sound of something, it really jars your nerves, you know? It really is uncomfortable to hear somebody not speaking their truth and deeply fighting to hold on to things that they think other people are going to look at them and say, wow, that's really amazing. Wow, you really know what you're talking about. Wow, you've accomplished quite a bit all by yourself, haven't you? And that's what the not-self mind in my experience of life before human design. That's what it thought. That's what it valued. So when I say you, I'm speaking to the passenger. I'm speaking to the witness consciousness that all of us have. Okay. And when I say the not you or the, the thinking mind that thinks, therefore it thinks it is <laughs> the you that you think you are, when in fact, what you really are is so much more. The conditioning, that's what I want to help you recognize in yourself and break free, just like I have, of the hold that this not-self I inside of your head about yourself that you misidentify with as yourself, as the you, the small you, as an ego, I, you. <laughs> there is no you. <laughs> it's simply conditioning. And when you recognize that, as far as the conditioned thinking I that you think you 
are, it becomes so much more fun to live life because then you don't take the I inside of your head personally. The I that you think you are is not what you really are. And I say what for a reason, my friends, because we are not a who, we are a what. (laughs) It's really fun to discover what you are. And so I'm going to give you the first most important thing to recognize for the what. For me as a what, I have the potential of emotionally projecting my energetic recognition of feelings into others to help them find success on a new journey. And as we embark on this new journey together, I want to explain to you what is human design. Human design, again, the science of differentiation, just simply this. It's very simple, but it's not easy. All it is is that navigation tool that's going to help you make decisions for yourself, as yourself. It is your genetic code. So here we have a quote from Ra. Human design is logical, mechanical knowledge. It is not theorizing nor philosophizing. It is about being able to do practical things with this knowledge, which brings practical benefits. Enjoy living your design. Enjoy the fact that there is truly valuable knowledge so that you too can participate in becoming a healthy, self-loving being. The most important work you can do in this life is to love yourself unconditionally, no matter what. No matter what you see, no matter what you think, no matter what you see yourself doing that you are confused by, if you can love yourself, you've done a great service to the world because now you're living a life on track, on purpose, a life that leads you to fulfillment. It can seem really complex, but it's really not all that uh, complicated. In the human design system, we have a combination of different things that create our system. It's a combination of both the esoteric and the exoteric observational sciences. So we'll begin with looking at the DNA. DNA is a self-replicating material that is present in nearly all living organisms as the main constituent of chromosomes. Nearly every cell in a person's body has the same DNA. Both DNA and the I Ching use a basic set of patterns to build up their form and function. There is a mathematical correlation between the structure of DNA and the I Ching. So on the slide you'll see that the hexagrams, you know, these little symbols are hexagrams outside of the rave mandala wheel. And each of these hexagrams, hex meaning six, gram like a little picture, there are six lines per hexagram. The ancient I Ching was called the Book of Changes. So it gives us a touch into the ancient structure that the ancient Chinese recognized as something that was critical to showing our movement, our way, the way that we as humans live and breathe and be and experience ourselves in existence. Now, if you look up here, we see that there are 64 codons And there are six groups of amino acids per codon. So this is the mathematical correlation that we have in design that is brought into a body graph that is going to show us the map of our potential. Thank you, Lisa. So the rave I Ching and its 64 gates is all around the mandala wheel. You can see the images and it's brought into this map inside of the body graph so that form of the body inside of the mandala wheel. This is a genetic imprint of what your genetic potential is. And on this slide, I've highlighted, I've colored in everything because I want you to recognize everyone has everything in the body graph. You are not missing anything. Nothing is broken. Everything that is colored in is there for a specific reason. And everything that is open is open for a specific reason. You're here to learn about those things that are open or undefined. So anytime somebody says, I don't have this, I don't have that, you might hear me kind of say, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. Really, I'm saying I don't have the imprint, not that I don't have the gate. I don't have a planet in this center. For me, undefined ajna, I don't have a planet there, which is our conceptualization function. But I have an ajna. Everyone has everything. 
So these 64 gates are represented by their hexagram in the outer ring of the rave mandala. What is a gate? A gate is an opening, a portal, if you will, from one function in the body graph, a center, to another function in the body graph, another center. And all of these centers are hubs, like vortices of energy. And each of those gates are activated by our solar system's movement through those gates. Everyone has all 64 gates present in their design. Only the defined or colored in gates can potentially create definition in your rave chart. So hexagrams, the yang and the yin of life. That is an important piece to understand that everyone has everything, my friends. You're not missing anything in your design. So let's talk briefly about the human design components. The rave mandala wheel, our beautiful rave mandala. I love this. Here's the exoteric nature of design, genetics, quantum physics, biochemistry. Here's the esoteric nature of design, the chakra system, the I Ching, the Kabbalah, and astrology, both Eastern and Western astrology represented in the human design system, I might add. Based on this mandala wheel, this structure, this form of what it is to be human that never changes, the structure itself, when you were born, from that moment forward, the structure never changes. Every single planet has energy flowing through it, and the energy that is flowing through it, we call neutrinos. Ra would call the breath of stars in his poetic way of explaining things. This is our planetary program that we're all imprinted by. And those neutrinos are shot out as a byproduct of nuclear fusion from the sun. The same process that produces sunlight produces neutrinos. And those neutrinos are flowing through the planets. Those planets are in a particular place in space when you were born. And three months before you were born, as we'll explain on the next slide, and those planets have an energy imprint. They have a frequency. They have different components of what they're made of. Now, unlike sunlight, neutrinos can penetrate through solid, quote unquote, solid objects. We know that everything really, <laughs> solidity depends on your perspective. <laughs> How solid really are we? Not very, we know. We're not very solid. Neutrinos are very small, small pieces of matter. They carry information. Ra was told this even before, you know, the scientific community stated that neutrinos carry matter. They carry information. There are 10 tens of billions of neutrinos that pass through every square centimeter every moment. Billions upon billions of neutrinos that are bombarding your cells, my cells. That's why I do the transit report on Sundays so that we can see what's going on and we can remember that we have our umbrella, we have our strategy, we have our authority. So you were coded at birth and 88 degrees before you were born. This is how human design is so very different from basic astrology in that basic astrology takes a look at the moment of your birth. Okay, so we have the moment, the calculation of birth is the personality side of the body graph. This is 13 activations right after you leave your mother's womb. Okay, the moment that your last baby toe comes out. It's not when the cord is cut. It's not um, when you start to crown. It's not when they announce your time of birth. It's the moment that you are your own entity outside of mama. You have your imprint. Now, at that precise moment, three months before you were born, there was a moment of imprinting as well. And this is the design activations. So there's a real common question that people have. Well, what about if I'm premature? <laughs> Remember, you know how all of us have a different maturity <laughs> path and progress. We might have our growth spurts before somebody else. We might have our, you know, maturity of our mind or emotions before somebody else. And by the way, in human design, our end of our childhood is 30. So that can release some of the pressure off of any of you to think that you have to have it all together by the time you reach college age and know what you're supposed to be doing here. 
The design activation is imprinted the moment that the body is done being built. So the body, the body is the life, my friends. The body has a moment where it is ready to receive its personality crystal. So it gets called in. It gets called in by the magnetic monopole. We go into more of this in further classes. But I want to impart to you that there is a design a body. Think of red like blood on the left-hand side. This is your body. Your body is the life. And this is your witness, your, your identification with the I that thinks, therefore it thinks it is, the I that thinks it is something a personality, a yeah, witness of life. This personality, this design that is here to be a witness, oftentimes is very different than what happened three months ago. And this is where the challenges arise. Because we are not this and that. We are a quantum of the two. And that quantum of the two can be accessed through our decision-making strategy. Very simple, very simple keys. A strategy for making decisions and an authority that is a personal experience of the body's way, the body's nature. The lived, breathed experience of what you came here to do is evident within this body graph. We can see it. It's a map. It's a map like any other map. We can read it. We can decode it. You don't have to understand what all these components mean in order to live this breathing being that is sitting right here, <laughs> that you're watching, doing whatever it is that it's doing, reading the slides on the page, looking at the images, listening to my voice, whatever it is that you're doing. You don't have to understand this map. For some of us, like myself, it was the study of human design that brought me to specific realizations and recognitions about myself. Not everybody needs the kind of deep years of dedication and study to grasp this. In fact, it might take you further away from really grasping this. If you get lost in the details of overwhelm of too much information, and you start to go into this and that and what does this mean and all that stuff. Stop looking outside of yourself for other people to tell you what this means or what that means. It takes a long time to get there. It might take you a few years. <laughs> Wait, what does this mean, Lavina? Oh, okay, I'll explain. That's not a problem. My cure on return is about explanation. So let's continue on the explanation and in the journey. I just want you to know the keys to navigating are free. Mybodygraph.com gives you your map. It gives you the keys for free. The very first step in our mybodygraph.com, which is by Jovian Archive. And disclosure, I do work for them. I don't get paid extra. If you go use that site, you can use, you know, the Maya Mechanics, which is free as well. Download that off jovianarchive.com. The information that you find about your map is free. And this course will help you understand more of the embodiment. But the very f uh, first intro to human design in the humandesign.live website, that too is free and that's enough. Now, some of us need a little bit more handholding because we want to get into the details. We want to understand what this means. We want to maybe embark on the journey of becoming a professional. And if, hey, that's all true for you, I might be one of your people in your life that you're here to learn from. Now, the nine centered human has a design structure that never changes. And that's the no choice. Okay. When we talk about not having a choice when you, your I that thinks, therefore it thinks it is, when the I that you identify with as who you are, when it lets go into the surrender to the body, the body is the life, the form being its own expression of the joyous nature of that which it is you are, then there's nothing to do but watch. To watch as the being before you does its thing that you're observing constantly in this life. So let's talk about what you can observe when you look at a body graph. You have the head center. The head center is a mental pressure. It's designed to bring us inspiration. That's at the top of the head. It is a triangle pointing upwards and it's yellow if it's defined meaning consistent in you. We have the Ajna center. It's our awareness center. It's our conceptualization function. 
It helps us come to awareness. It has these mental anxieties, these fears that drive us to be certain. So if you have it defined, you have a consistent mind that is designed to put mental certainty out into the world in a very specific way. Now with the throat center, this is our home for our manifestation, manifestation being also communication, speaking, maybe even the expression of action. So the throat gives us our connection to the world of form, our ability to attract attention based on whatever voice it is that we are here to communicate with. Remember, everyone has everything. You can use any voice, but there are very specific voices that you have, that you speak with, that you know are inherent to the nature of truth of that which it is you are here to be and how you are here to communicate if you are a projector like me or respond if you're a generator or manifest if you're a manifester. However, You are here to be surprised and delighted by life if you're a reflector. Now, the G-Center is home to our higher self, G-Center right here. I like to think of it as G for geometry to remember. You don't have to think of it that way because that's not really what it's about. But it does bring us along our path, our trajectory in space, the geometry of me and you coming together and, you know, virtual reality like this or an actual physical form. It's about the self, the transcendent love of all that is and our direction in this life, our space in this life, our place in this life. So when it's defined, you're like a lighthouse. You are a guiding light for others because others others look to you for direction. They look to you as an example of someone perhaps who knows where they're going. Even if you don't consciously recognize that you know where you're going, you have an identity that's fixed and a role that is consistent. Now, if we look at the heart center where we see a little tiny triangle here, this is the ego eye. That split off from the higher self now in our nine center human. This is a motor. It is the energy to provide willpower. It is our ego, the tribal we or the individual I. It is the ego that can provide and promise and prove. If it's defined, you have something to prove in this life. When you have a defined sacral center, the energy resource, which is a motor function, it gives us life force that is consistent. It is the creative fecundity of the sexuality, the reproductive organs, and our ability to take care of what we've created in this life, whether it be babies or business, in order to ensure that humanity moves forward in order to ensure that we thrive and survive and evolve. Now, I'm going to go down to the root and then we'll talk about the two awareness centers flanking these motor functions here. The root center is our pressure to lead a physical life, to lead an emotional life, to lead a creative life. It is a motor center that is responsible for adrenaline, You know, the adrenal system is here. It's about stress and physical pressure that you put out consistently into the world if you have it defined. And now let's talk about the splenic center. The splenic center is our oldest awareness center. It's about your immune system, its intuition, its instinct, its pattern recognition. It knows what's coming. It has this spontaneous individual hunch or awareness. And on the other side, the flip side, we have the solar plexus, which is our emotional intelligence, developing spirit consciousness. And it gives us the motor function of desire, passion, and need. It brings us potential awareness through an emotional wave. So because the solar plexus is dominated by the motor function, We are aware or we're not. We're emotional or we're not. It just moves in waves. So that's a basic understanding of what human design is. It gives us this map, this beautiful wisdom about what is us and what isn't us. Now, what can human design do for you? What does it have to offer you? 
what are the things that it can bring into your life besides self-love? Yes, love is such an amazing thing to love yourself no matter what you see or what you do or what you think. Your differentiation, which again, human design is the science of differentiation. We see that map showing definition, which is consistent, and openness, which is not consistent. So the openness is where you're receptive, anything that is in white, this is where you're receptive to learning and conditioning, it's your school that you're going to, and the definition in this life, if you have it, not all of us have it, but if there is definition, this is what you broadcast or emanate, this is what is fixed and reliable. So I'm going to read you something that Ross said about openness. And by the way, all this content was created in 2014, just upgraded and made the slides look really pretty. So this is what I found really, really impactful from Ra. Now remember something about openness, whether that openness is in a center, a gate, or a channel. It does not mean it's empty or broken, and it doesn't have to be fixed. What it really is, is a receptor. These are receptors. Remember that when you're looking at your body graph, what you're looking at is your differentiation. What makes you different from the other person? What makes you like everybody else is where you're open because this is where you're conditioned. And this is why, not talking about Ra's quote anymore, this is why it's so profound when you go through the living or design awakening experience because we take time to slowly uncover the places where you've been conditioned and the places where you've been suffering because your mind is trying to fit in when in actuality what you're here to do is stand out so when back to raw when you're looking at your design what you're looking at is what is activated and colored in you're looking at what is fixed and reliable in you. It is not going to change. It is your difference. And it's why everything in human design is based on trusting what is fixed to make decisions. Because those decisions are going to be correct for you. The what you really are. For your differentiation. So now reflectors are a whole different story. We'll talk about that in the course, but for now, the 99% of you are solar beings who have definition, so I want you to recognize that is who you are or what you're here to be in specificity, in uniqueness. The you that is fixed, correctly limited, highly specialized, that is going to remain you for the rest of your life, the only thing that can be trusted and consistent to be correct in the nature of your design interfacing with life for who you are for yourself if you're a generator, who you are for others if you're a projector, how you're here to impact if you're a manifester. And as the reflector is concerned, the life force in your design comes from your interactions with the transits, particularly the moon. And so we look at that deeper in further areas of the study. Now I want to share with you what is conditioning. Oh, when I came to human design, I'm like, conditioning? What are you talking about? Yeah, I have conditioner. I use it when I shower. <laughs> I had no idea what, what the hell is conditioning. So what in human design, we use this term to talk about homogenization. Big word. What does homogenization mean? Have you ever gotten homogenized milk? It's when they pound the crap out of it so that it won't separate. It becomes so similar in nature that it's, it's the same. It's the same across the board. And what we see in the undefined areas of the body graph where there is openness, that's where we take in people and we take in our parents, we take in our friends, we take in the schools that we go to, the media that we listen to, we take in our families, we take in our country, we take in the society, the religions. Oh, lovers, do we take them in? <laughs> we take them in, we take in the solar system completely and utterly. And if we base our decisions on things we take in, Rather than what we are here to live and breathe and be, if we don't make our decisions correctly, then we find ourselves in the not self. So I'm going to put quotes around that because I want you guys to not think that the not self is not good. It's just not you, the not you, okay? 
And so many people come to design and they start to learn and they might, you know, go off into this recognition of other people's not self and say, point out other people's not self. Not self. (laughs) You're doing this thing again. Don't do that. I've done it. It's not helpful. Always bring people back home to their truth. So in the truth of you operating in correct, in alignment, in correctness, you will get everything that you really, 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 really were born for. The success projector, the satisfaction generator, the peace manifester, the surprise reflector. But I want to share with you, if you can recognize this, most people who have this undefined can. Let's, let's talk about an example of conditioning. The undefined head center at the top, you can see right here, it's colored in yellow, so that would be defined. But if it were not colored in yellow, which 70% of the population are undefined and they have an open head center, undefined, they simply have a gate activation, but it's not colored in. Open meaning no gate activations, and this, therefore this would be white. All of them, 70% of the population on this planet, all of them have one similar conditioning. They are pressured to ask questions that do not matter to them. This is the realm of questions. The big why in the sky, what's going to happen, and what the hell happened. (laughs) And this is where shiny object syndrome lies. You're chasing down every different rabbit hole. Does that person have the answer? Does that person, can they help me rationalize and, and get over my fear of ignorance, rationalize inner truth and tell me why? Does that person have the ability to help me make sense of what the heck happened? The questions that you ask, where undefined head centers ask, if they're not important, then you lose focus easily. If they're important, you'll maintain your focus. Because if it's correct, if it's invited out of you, if it's drawn out of you, there's a focus there. But if it's not correct, losing focus, running down every rabbit hole. This is where we stay up late at night trying to figure out the answers to the why and wherefores of life. And if you are thinking about things that don't matter to you, it's an immense waste of time and energy. And then you can't sleep. And then you stay up all night trying to make sense out of things. And then we have problems with our stress levels during the day because we didn't get a good night's sleep. So when we understand our openness and what it means to be conditioned, to be in shadow, in this case, chasing questions that don't matter, it helps us come back home to our truth. Is anybody recognizing me for me? And am I emotionally clear about what they want from me? That's my decision-making strategy. Do I have the energy, the desire to explain these things or to play this role for this person Because they've asked me for my guidance, my energy. Because the moment that you run down the pressure, the mind's pressure, it's never a place for authority, by the way. This is never an authority in your life. The questions about what's happening, what's going to happen, and what did happen. If you can understand that, even if it's defined, it's not your authority. The authority comes from somewhere else in the body. Understand that your conditioning is what leads you to be in shadow. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about what conditioning is. Conditioning is not, hello, transit coming in. Okay, right now the transit is coming in, 6124. And all of you might have some recognition of this because this has happened a lot this past year, this transit, because Pluto's been sitting there in gate 61 and, you know, maybe Uranus coming in or whatever the case may be. Lots of pressure for looping thoughts over and over and over and over and over again. What does it mean? What does it mean? Why is this happening? What does it mean? What's going on? If you make a decision from that looping voice inside of your head, that's when you get conditioning. Conditioning is not the actual experience of the energy transitioning through you. It is taking action from the energies, particularly in an incorrect way that can lead you to pain and suffering. Okay? I'm going to keep explaining this as we move on. What changes 
our lives and what changes the aura of our planet is human beings living out their nature. You and me, we're all incarnate. We're all in form. Expressions and experiments of consciousness in form. So where do we begin? We begin with the form. The form is what is going to change your life. Honoring the form, revering the form, following your body. And how do we follow the body? We discover your type and we explain your aura. So there are four basic auric frequencies. There are the generators, the sacral beings, approximately 67% of the population who have that red square colored in the lower center of the body graph. We have our manifestors, who are approximately 9% of the population, manifestors having energy that is directly connected to the thro throat or indirectly connected to the throat, but no sacral center defined. So these two are energy beings. One can consistently manifest, one can consistently generate. Now there are two who are non-energy beings. Doesn't mean they don't have energy, it simply means they have no consistent access to manifestation or generation of energy. They have very different purposes, very different roles in this life. I happen to be a projector. Projectors are approximately 23% of the population. They have perhaps, and now this in this design, it's just so showing the, ref, the projected channels. If this was defined, all of it, you can see that's why uh, Loki colored this in red and colored this in black, because if you had any of the black channels, you're a projector. If you have the combination of any of the red channels with the black channels, then you're manifester. But if you have any of the red channels and no of the black channels, you are a projector. And projectors are here to be guides, not to consistently manifest or generate, can manifest or generate in correct alignment with other beings, but mostly guiding the manifestation and the generation of energy, the work that is done in order to bring success into the world. Okay, the manifester impacting, the generator responding. Now the reflector, approximately 1%, very, very rare, unique beings like our unicorns, our fabled unicorns, except these ones are real. <laughs> I haven't seen a unicorn, so I'm not sure if they really exist. But they really, these reflectors, are here to reflect the nature of the totality. They are lunar beings. They don't have the solar broadcasting of energy that the other three types have. Now, you might say, look at this and go, wow, that's really simple. How is it that the eight billion people or something on this planet have one of four auras? Well, there's all kinds of subtypes. We're not gonna get into this in this class, but I just want you to know, this is the basic place the auric frequencies of how we get our strategy for operating in alignment. So let's talk a bit about the energy type of the generator. These are the most common. Doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with that. In fact, it's beautiful. Ra would call them the blessed, you know, God's creatures of this planet as far as what they're here for and what they can do. They are an energy type. The subtypes of them at this point, I can let you know, basic generator, classic builder, we could call them because they are the builders of our world. And then we have the manifesting generator where the energy is connected to the throat. Now it may be cor connected, correct, connected directly. There we go. And that's a pure manifesting generator. Or it might be a combination of one of these channels with the energy connected up to the throat or the energy over here connected up to the throat. And that makes the lump term of manifesting generator. So the themes here are going to be either satisfaction or frustration in both cases. A deep, penetrating, you know, broadcasting of this gorgeous satisfaction, this humming along of beautiful energy in use, power expressed in the life, in the body, the vitality of the form. Or it can be this deep, pervasive frustration so deep that it leads you to constantly quit everything that you begin. So that's the basic frequency. Its auric frequency is open and enveloping. 
okay? Open and enveloping. Very, very powerful aura that broadcasts and pulls people in. It's like a vortex of energy. It draws things to it in order for it to respond. So this is the most important thing to recognize about you if you're a generator. You re wait to respond. Now as a manifester, the energy type of the manifester, we have energy reaching the throat that is consistent. Therefore, the center that is home of the manifester, you could say, is the throat. Because that energy reaching the throat is the very definition of manifestor. And we have the themes of peace, one of the themes of anger. So there can be peace informing in order to impact and making their impact in peace or there can be anger anger at trying to other people trying to control them anger and not, at not allowing their power to shine to not allow themselves to make their impact and their aura is very different it's closed okay it's very very close to the body as far as compared to the generative frequency which is much 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 bigger it's dense it kind of has an impact when you come across it. It can repel other people, okay, as an energy type. It has to have that density in order to make its impact. Now let's take a look at the next being. So remember, those two are energy types. And it's not to say that the projector can't have, have energy. The very nature of some projectors like me, huh? I've got lots of emotional energy, as you might have heard at the beginning of this class. Now, the non-energy type of the projector simply means that there's no consistent access to generation of life force, and there's no consistent access to manifestation in this life. So the projector has a very specific theme that rises from the definition of the channels, and that is a deep bitterness, even to the point of resentment, when not operating in alignment, or the auric frequency of success in everything that you touch. Everything that you touch, you infect. Hi, I'm a contagion, I infect. Infect people with success. Okay, if you're aligned and you're operating in alignment, projector, success. Now the aura in its nature is focused, singularly focused, penetrating and absorbing. So instead of that giant aura or that no, smaller dense aura, we now have a focused aura. What's it focusing on? One other person at a time. Unless it happens to have one of these channels here, it's best one other person at a time. That's one of the secrets to the projector, okay? Waiting for that energetic recognition of where to bring its success. Otherwise, there is only bitterness. Now, the last and definitely not least, we have the non-energy type, meaning, again, no consistent access to manifestation or generation of energy. We have a reflector whose themes encompass the wide delight of surprises and they can be pleasant or unpleasant but they're surprise of what life has to offer or this deep disappointment the disappointment of you know maybe failed expectations thinking that something was going to be this way and then it turns out that it's not they are simply two sides of the same coin as far as how they show up one can feel different absolutely than the other but it's still kind of a surprise, isn't it, when disappointment shows up? You, you expected something else. When you didn't get it, it was disappointment. <laughs> okay, now the aura, it's sampling, it's resistance. We call it the Teflon aura, resistant. We call it like a Teflon aura in that it allows certain things in, it's kind of like this cascading, you know, energy that is, has its own protective field, and it just allows a little taste in, just a little taste, just a little taste. It has its own protective frequency. So when we look at the way that these reflectors, projectors, you know, the manifestors, and the generators, the aura is built from the energetic nature of the being. 
And from this energetic nature of the being, the body houses this spirit. The body is the life. The nature of you is you are spirit in form. The spirit of your life, the themes of your life showing, are part of your expression of this nature of that which it is you be. So when we look at the aura, this closed and repelling, this density, this open and enveloping, this availability, this focused and absorbing one person at a time, this resistant and sampling, all of these speak to the keys, the nature of how we're here to interact with each other. So in our experience of life, if I could only impart one thing to you, okay, and it didn't have anything else that you could, you know, experiment with that was more important than this, I'm going to give you existential questions for each type that I want to ask, invite, inform, initiate in you into experimenting with. And that is this Because this is the thing that's going to make a difference in your experience, whoever it is that you are. If you are a manifester, I want you to ask yourself. It can be very helpful to study or research, whatever it is that's correct for you. How do you impact others? That's the most important thing. You're concerned with your impact. And most of the time you have no idea the density of the impact that you make the profundity of how very deep your aura can affect us. So if you could only focus on one thing, I would have you focus on how do you impact others, okay? Think of it like a a Zen colon. It's something to contemplate, even though it's not maybe that uh, tricky or puzzle-like. It is something that is important for the manifester. Now, as we look through here, the generator, manifesting generator, you can see they're colored in the same. Because the same question, because the same center, the sacral center, the nature of being generative is who am I for myself? It's all about yourself and your life this trip. Now you might be somebody who's here to be deeply responsible for somebody else, but that's who you are for yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to do with them. It is who you are for you. I am a parent. I am a teacher. I am a this. I am a that. I'm an artist. Whatever it is that brings you joy and vitality and passion and abundance. This is the nature of you in this life. Who am I is your question. That's the only thing that matters. Nothing else matters but who you are for yourself and how you use your precious generative energy. Because the moment that you discover who you are and the satisfaction that that brings, that's when our world is transformed. My friends, I'm a projector, deeply conditioned, not self projectors, always going, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? (laughs) Any of these others, who am I? When in fact, the nature of the projector is best focused on who is the other? Who is this other in front of me? Okay, we have to wait for that invitation to bring the success to the other. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So if you could remember nothing else, projector friends, stop trying to figure yourself out and focus on who is in your life that invites you and is correct for you to guide. That's it. You're here to bring success out into the world. How do you do that? One person at a time in your advice and in your guidance, in your gift of your presence and your availability to bringing advice to that person. Now, the reflector, who is different? You are so freaking different. Have you noticed? You are very different, aren't you? So you are here to see who is different because the nature of your being is reflective and because you are constantly sampling you really have a sense of both objectivity and availability of seeing difference because you are constantly dealing with the conditioning of the transits and you can see who's bucked the trend Who's exited the matrix? Who's different than what's going on in the world around you? Who is different? 
Can you be your own beautiful, perfect, different self? You're so unique. In the conditioned not-self life, you try to be like everybody else who are all running around trying to figure out who they are unless they're generators and they're trying to impact or they're trying to figure out who other people are, you know, that kind of thing. The existential question on this page, you guys, I can't stress it enough. This is the most important thing, one of the most important things in this entire course is to align you to the fact that you're here to be different. Yes, you're here to be unique. You're here to be yourself. And this is the, the perfect question to ask yourself or to focus on as you move through the next couple months with us if you decide to continue. Now, all of us are here to be our own authority. We are all designed to make our own decisions for ourselves. Your personal authority process is your key to your sovereignty. It is your key to correct decision making. Understanding where your individual authority lies is critical to understanding how you're here designed, how you are designed, and here to make decisions that are aligned, to make decisions that you trust, to make decisions that are correct for you not for anybody else, not to people please, but for you. So our individual authority is activated through us by following the decision making strategy that is appropriate to our aura type. It helps a lot, I can tell you, because what this does is it releases the mind's hold on its thinking it is responsible for taking action, for making choices. If you instead follow the body, the body is the life, follow your process of authority, you find yourself making decisions that you can trust. You find yourself being your own authority. You find yourself loving yourself exactly as you are, because you are perfectly designed as you are for this life, no matter what your mind thinks, no matter the judgments, no matter the pain, no matter the suffering, everything in your life is exactly perfect for you. If you can just wake up out of the illusion and delusion that you are just that voice inside of your head, stop making decisions with that voice and instead make a decision from your own personal authority. So in this course, we're going to go through the processes of authority. We'll start out with looking at all the centers from the not self perspective, but we're going to spend a lot of time making sure that you understand how your own inner authority works if you have one of those and most of us do. So all these people over here do have their own process of their body speaking of their body living its life and dis-ease and dysfunction come from not aligning to your form. It's f the form is the truth of your reality. And then there are people, very rare, about 3% of the population who are mental projectors or who are reflectors as we saw in a previous slide. They have no inner authority. But that doesn't mean they can't be their own authority. It's just that they have a process of either outer or environmental authority. And we'll explain more about that as we continue. Let's start with part three, how to experiment with human design. So it's really simple, really, really simple. Those simple keys. Ra says, the fact of the matter is that you cannot truly understand the nature of a channel until you understand type because everything about a channel is related to type. Everything about a channel is related to type. So in the beginning, we look at the type overall. We don't dive into the channels necessarily in living your design. We want you to really grasp, grok, understand the mechanics of you, which is your type, which gives you a strategy. And those channels, if there are there, they, they give you an expression of your personal authority. Again, with the reflector, it's something that has to do with the nature of their connection to the moon, which is, you know, a process that requires time. So in understanding your mechanics, when we're looking at this, living your design as awakening experiment, as an awakening experience, or the program as it's known, it's otherwise known as LYD, what it will do is it will deepen your understanding of your personal design, 
and the design of your family and friends because we go over the nature of a lot of different things, not just your design, unless you're taking LYD with a guide privately, okay? But the, the program itself is intended for anyone from any walk of life to come into this experiment and to learn how your mechanics work. So the LYD program as Raw designed it, it's designed to strengthen and support your awakening process in living out your nature to correctly be nurtured by your life's experiences. So if you need a guide or you, you know you do better in a group, there are individuals who have been trained professionally to deliver the Living Your Design Awakening program, the only program we have in the entire system of human design that is for everybody, and it's a very spiritual program. It's an incredible journey of self-discovery and knowledge. And this is what begins your deconditioning process in earnest, if you're deciding to move forward, is to learn the appropriate keys for you and to experiment with them under the guidance of a guide, somebody who has learned this, deeply dedicated themselves to it, gone through their own process of deconditioning and ready and willing and definitely able to guide you in your process should you recognize that they are the person for you. Now, in the Living Your Design Awakening program, we're learning how to be wise about our openness. So a lot of the program is focused on what is going on in the mind, the conditioned thinking mind, that is derived from the openness so that you can recognize conditioning like that. To live your design, we need to practice correct decision making. It's not about, you know, going deep into all of the different human design programs that there is. This is it. This is the one. This is the only one you need, really. To know the conditioning and its expression of quote unquote, not self, not you, just means not consistent to you, not trustworthy within your design. If you know it, if you recognize the openness, you can see why it's important to experiment with living your truth. There's all kinds of wisdom and hidden potential that lies in your openness. In this Living Your Design program, we are here to help illuminate your true self we're here to help dispel the false and negative beliefs of misidentification with conditioning, your voice inside of your head about yourself, as who you think you are. You are not that. If that's the one thing you take away from this besides your existential question, remember to question everything you think, even the stuff that comes out of your mouth. Because your body, your body is the life. And we facilitate the deconditioning process within your nine centers through this program, through this awakening experiment and experience. We want you to learn to be wise about the openness rather than trying to fixate on it, to lock it in and to make it you. A Living Your Design program explores the undefined and open centers. It helps you know what conditions you. Okay, the, again, remember the conditioning Here's the not self of the undefined heart center. We talked about the head center earlier. Undefined heart center says, I'm not good enough. I need to promise and I need to prove. I need to compete and I need to control. I need to be the best and I need to deliver on my promises even though it's going to kill me. I'll do what I say I will do. And oh boy, is that painful. And does that show up a lot in not self, thinking that you have something to prove? So if you can see the hidden mind game in your decision-making strategy by using your decision-making strategy instead of following the undefined centers, so using your authority rather than following the voice inside of your head that says, I have to prove I'm the best. Understand the relationship between your openness versus definition okay whatever your definition happens to be just drawing mine on the page that definition is specifically you if you're a solar being like i am and you are defined it's specific to you correctly limited highly highly 
highly specialized. No one else like you on the planet, even if you see the same freaking centers and channels colored in. Absolutely, utterly, even if you were born right next to each other, minutes apart, underneath the surface, there's very different ways that we show up. So here in this awakening experience, you're going to discover that this is where we have a safe space to experiment. Because my friends, if you take this out into the world, we're often think, thought of as a cult because it's so different. Yeah, people don't trust what they don't understand. And um, there's all these quote unquote rules. There's no rules. They're guidelines. Think of them like guidelines. They're tools, really. Strategy, authority. It's just a technique. It's a technique for activating the uniqueness, the inherent you-ness, okay? That's all this is, the uniqueness of you. So when you experiment with living your design, why do you experiment? You experiment so that you can have the beauty of awakening to yourself. When you begin your experiment, wait for a response, wait to be recognized, inform in order to impact, or have your lunar process you know wait for the initiation of the moon when you have your personal authority you follow your body one of the most important things that you're actually doing is that you're changing your physical frequency if you were to look back at 2014 my very first presentation of this you would hear a very different voice speaking to you because the body is different and the benefits that you get when you live your life in the way that it was intended to be lived. This living your design experiment and experience gives you the foundation you need so that you can see how and why to experiment with strategy and authority. Now, I'm not one for the hard sell. Again, remember, I told you, my body graph, first step is free. When you're ready for a guide, when you feel like you've hit a wall, when you need more support, when you need more guidance, when you need help, those like myself and all of the Living Your Design guides are there to help you recognize the mental influences that hijack your decisions from your personal authority so that you can see your not self shadow, so that you can see the wisdom potentials that are, that are there, so that you can live a life that's on track and on path and on purpose, the fulfillment of your success, satisfaction, peace, and surprise that you were born for, that is the essence of the nature of the spirit that is embodied in this life, so that you can build a strong foundation of experience before you begin any higher educational programs in design. No matter where you've been, you can take this class over and over and over and over again. You know why? Because over the years, it's like different keys unlock. It takes time to get rid of the, de the conditioning, to decondition. Ra would say it takes seven years. And at this point, people go, what? I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> no, I'm going to go do something else. And then if it's right for you, it comes back into your lap, maybe years later, decades later, and you go, okay, this is showing up again. Three different people told me about human design this week. Maybe I'll go learn about it now. <laughs> if you're not experimenting with it yet, try it. Try it and see. It's not about belief or faith or hope. It's about the practical keys that you can experiment with to discover your nature that is true to you and that is satisfying and fulfilling and successful when it is lived in alignment with you if you're ready to take the leap of trust into your design. Ross says, the moment you can see the helplessness of another human being and accept their helplessness, then you can accept their helplessness with real dignity and hopefully the respect will be returned. This is the bedrock for me. The bedrock is the integrity of a human being to recognize how important it is that you're correct. That love is not something you need or want or you desire, but love is a natural companion in this life. And it begins within yourself. It begins with self-love. So I want to thank you for being here. Uh, our office, Julie and myself, can be reached office at humandesignlifecoaching.com. And my slogan has evolved into precise advice to change your fate. It really is something that is profound 
in this life. If you have any questions that you want to ask, please feel free to type into the Q&A box. But in the human design system, this precise advice that can change your fate all of us have experiences where we gave our authority to someone else and we perhaps allowed them to tell us what to do. Because as children, can you remember mom, dad telling you, no, do this, <laughs> or whatever the case may be as far as how they conditioned you away from your truth. And what human design as a system can give you and offer you is how to come back home to your truth. So I really hope that this has been helpful in helping you understand how to align to your truth and that you can engage with the experiment for yourself as yourself as is correct for you. Whether you take this on as a journey that you embark on now or at some time in the future or not at all. Remember my friends, all you really need is all right there within you. No matter what you think is broken, lacking, needs to be fixed. There's nothing wrong with you. Everything that you've ever wanted is right there inside of you. That unconditional love and acceptance, that beautiful source of self that you are. You are an expression of love. You don't need love. You are love. And I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for dedicating your time and energy to the human design experiment. For now, I'll say goodbye. Namaste. Love, honor, trust, respect yourself always. You're welcome. Bye for now.